I woke up, facing towards the mirror, and I saw someone standing beside the bed. Home. Your safety. Your comfort. Your protection from the outside world. It's terrifying to think of someone breaking in, but fortunately we can call the police when this happens. But what do you do when someone, or something, unexplainable is in your home? Who do you call? If only that were possible. Get comfy and be prepared to feel unsafe in your own home with tonight's stories. And welcome to another episode of The Nightmare Society. I was sitting on the couch watching Netflix when my dog, Reverend, a 90 pound pit lab shepherd mix, started growling at the window. I live in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by woods, and have a large lake in front of my house, so there's a lot of wildlife and I didn't think anything about it. I let Rev out and he stayed on the porch and continued to pace and growl. After about 10 minutes he scratched to be let back in. My couch is right next to the front door so I just reached behind me and popped it open and didn't look. I heard him come in and go into the bedroom via hardwood floors and I swung the door shut. Less than three minutes later I hear Rev still growling on the porch. I got up and checked the bedroom then the other rooms in the house. Nothing was in here. I let Reverend in and he hopped on the couch but was still growling. I had him get down and took him to check every room in the house and he stayed a long time sniffing in the bedroom but eventually came back in the living room and laid down like nothing ever happened. I didn't sleep well last night. What the heck came into my house? So I'm going to start off by telling you one of my experiences from my sister's house, as well as one of hers that scared me the most. Me and my fiance were about to stay at my sister's house for two to three nights to take care of the cats while she was away. We looked forward to it because she lives five minutes from the ocean and it's a really nice area. We got there in the morning and it was fine until the evening when we started feeling watched. We didn't tell each other that we felt uncomfortable though until after the whole experience. If I went to the bathroom upstairs while my fiancé stayed in the kitchen, he told me he would turn to look behind his back all the time as it felt like someone stood there while I hurried back from the bathroom as I felt the same way. So being alone for just a few minutes in the house made us feel really... odd. Anyway, we stayed up and watched some movies and didn't notice anything weird. We went to bed and fell asleep. Then, it happened. My sister's bed is placed in the middle of the room. On one side of the bed, my side, there's this huge closet that has a big mirror on it. And on the other side, there's just a baby crib. And on the other side, there's just a baby crib. I woke up facing towards the mirror, and I saw someone standing beside the bed. My first thought was that it was my fiancé getting up to go to the bathroom or something, so I just closed my eyes again and asked him where he was going. Since he didn't reply, I turned around in bed and felt him pressed against me. He was still laying in bed with me after all. When I opened my eyes, I saw a shadow-like shape next to the bed for a few seconds. I felt really scared, but I didn't scream or anything, and I clearly felt that it was a man. 
When the shadow disappeared, I tried to wake up my fiancé, but he was groggy and just laid his arms around me and somehow I fell asleep as well. He was terrified when I told him about it in the morning, though. At first, I thought it was my mother who passed away not long before this happened. But I could clearly feel that it was a man. And if it was my mother, would I feel scared and uncomfortable? The story my sister told me scares me the most. She had just taken a bath upstairs and was headed to bed. The bedroom is just beside the upstairs bathroom, when she heard that the TV was on downstairs. She went to check it out but saw someone laying in the couch in front of the TV, seemingly asleep. She thought it was her partner that had fallen asleep so she went up to her bedroom again. But there he was. Her partner was asleep in the bed with their toddler. She woke him up and they went down to check it out, but there was no one there. The thing is that my sister has always had these stories, not just in this house. In one of her first apartments, she called my mom crying one night because she had laid in bed with her partner when someone walked up to her bed and sat down on her legs. She could clearly feel the weight of it and see the bed sheets move as if someone was sitting there. Other small things like hearing footsteps, seeing shadows, scratching on the bathroom door, etc. has always followed her. I know she played around a lot with the Ouija board when she was maybe 15 or 16. She's about 30 now. Has she just had bad luck finding a good home? Or is she followed? It creeps me out, but she doesn't like to talk about it and doesn't believe it herself. Just a reminder guys, you can support the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Thank you. My parents had divorced when I was really young, around 5 or 6 years old. However, my parents were on mostly good terms, so they settled for joint custody. For those of you who don't know what that is, basically I would travel back and forth between my mom and dad's house every other week. Around eight years after the divorce, my dad met who is now my stepmother. She was a few years older than him and financially stable, having a government job. Something to do with the housing authority. I don't know the details of what she does, but she had a son that was a couple of years older than me. She and my dad had pretty okay credit, so they bought a large two-story house in a mill town in Louisiana for practically a steal. They could, most, they could almost buy it up front, and having opened our own gas station, money was rolling in. It was currently my mother's rotation, so I didn't get to see the house until a little week later. When I did come to the new house, I found that they had already set up my bedroom in one of the two bedrooms upstairs. They were both built really simply. To paint a mental picture of them, the stairs basically led up to a small hallway with a linen closet to the wall on your left, my stepbrother's bedroom on the right, and my bedroom a short walk down the hall to the left. Each room had a walk-in area with another door that led into a bathroom which could be used to travel between the two rooms, which I found to be an odd design choice, even at my young age of 13. The first night I had stayed in the house, me and my stepbrother Dylan were upstairs. I distinctly remember we were playing Ratchet and Clank, going commando split-screen on the PlayStation 2. We were both sitting on the floor with our backs against the door when we heard and felt three distinct knocks on the door against our backs. We both looked at each other. We hadn't heard anyone come up the stairs, so we asked who it was. No reply. Just silence. So he got up and opened the door to find, you guessed it, no one was there. We had shrugged it off, but I did tell our parents who told us not to worry. 
We had shrugged it off, but did tell our parents, who told us not to worry. I had stayed in the room for several months in weekly rotations. One night, however, I woke up extremely hot. I don't know what time it was, but it couldn't have been too late because I heard my stepmom and her friend Jan talking downstairs. I should mention that at that age I slept with my door cracked and the hallway light on outside. When I woke up my room was pitch black and my fan was off. To make matters worse the hallway light was off but my door was still open. Hearing my stepmom downstairs I decided that I would go downstairs to see what they were doing and to pee downstairs. While there was a bathroom upstairs the toilet unfortunately didn't work correctly. Something about the plumbing was messed up. However, as I got up and started to cross the room, the door gently swayed to the latch of my door, then slammed shut. I had never been so scared in my life. I don't know how long I stood there frozen in fear, but it felt like hours. Nothing happened as I stood there, so finally I mustered up the courage to open the door to find nothing there. Spooked, I rushed down the stairs, nearly tripping over my own feet. I joined my stepmom and her friend downstairs who promptly yelled at me for still being up on a school night. I had noticed that they were both sitting around the coffee table on the floor. On the table is what I realized later in my life was a Ouija board. I stopped staying in that bedroom after that. Update my stepmom and dad have both moved out of the house since then, but just last night I was having a beer with my dad and I had asked him about the house and if anything strange had ever happened to him while he and my stepmom were there. After the events of the Ouija board, strange stuff had started happening around the house. Pictures and crucifixes especially would randomly fall off the walls. In some cases, they would come home from working at the store and every wall decoration would be on the ground. In other cases, items would randomly disappear. Most frustratingly, my dad's keys, which included his truck keys and a multitude of keys for the store, storage, door keys, etc. They would eventually turn up, but always in the most bizarre places like the back of the bathroom cabinet or in the kitchen sink. In some of the weeks that I wasn't there, they say they would hear a drum, but could never find the source of the noise. My dad would always follow the sound to one room, only for it to start up somewhere else in the house. Another time, all three of them were in the den watching a movie when there was a loud bang coming from the master bedroom. My dad says it sounded exactly like a gunshot. Rushing into the bedroom, he found nothing but a black stain on the wall that was roughly the circumference of a quarter. Supposedly, they scrubbed and scrubbed at it, but it wouldn't come off the wall, so they eventually covered it up with a picture. The last experience they had was by far the scariest. Supposedly, one night, my dad had gotten out of bed presumably to use the bathroom, but instead of going to the master bathroom, he went to the little closet bathroom that was located under the stairs. My stepmom tells me that she awoke to banging outside of their room. She quickly realized my dad wasn't in bed. According to her, she heard him banging around and yelling from inside the bathroom. She tried to open the door and despite the handle turning, she couldn't open the door. Finally, after 10 minutes, she had forced the door open to find him in the dark, covered in his own urine, and crying. I should mention that my father is hard as nails and is not one to cry. He claims he doesn't remember getting up or going to the bathroom at all. He also won't tell us what it was that he saw in there. It was only a few months later that they moved out and put the house up for sale. My dad didn't even go back to sign the paperwork. Whatever he saw shook him to the core. And that's that.
I hope that those of you who read the story in full will leave feedback in the comment section. Truly disturbing encounters. A huge thank you to our contributors for sharing their stories. Spiffy Nikki 13, Bluff Puddle, and GM Xerox. If you have input on these encounters that you'd like to share with the contributors, the links to the stories will be in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stay safe.